Hello, Brigadiers and Brigadettes, and hockey fans alike. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to my channel, now let's jump into some hockey content. Hello everybody, happy Thursday. Today we're going to be going just right on into it. We're going to be talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets, my three questions for them. I'm pretty excited because I know that uh, the Blue Jackets are my favorite team, and I normally don't get to talk about them as much because I'm covering every team now just to get a little bit more views, be able to do this for a living. But, you know, it's going to be pretty exciting today. So if you're a Blue Jackets fan or you just like hockey, so, you know, watch it and it'll be good. So here's the three questions for the Columbus Blue Jackets that I have. The first is, can Max Domi provide the additional offense the Blue Jackets desperately need? And I feel like I've asked that question for a few teams, but the Blue Jackets is especially true since I've been a fan of the Blue Jackets. At best, most of the years, they're an average team when it comes to scoring. So the first year I was a fan, they were 17th. The second year was that crazy year where they went on the 16-game winning streak. They were 6th that year. Then they were 16th, 12th, and 28th. A lot of that offense came from Panarin um, over those course of the past two seasons before last. And last year was a major drop-off, but there were some reasons for that. The drop-off, I guess, was... To be expected, for the most part, you lost Panarin, Duchesne, Zing Zingle, and it took a lot of punch out for us offensively, and then the injury set in that killed our offense. Literally, for my birthday last year, I wanted to wish for all of our players to have brand new ankles. They could even have mine. At one point, it was ridiculous. Seth Jones, Oliver Bjorkstrand, and Cam Atkinson all missed significant amounts of time last year due to fractured ankles. That accounted for about, those three players accounted for about 22% of our goals last season. With that being said, I'm not going to rely on Cam to carry the offense anymore. I don't expect to see him scoring 40 plus goals or anything like that. Getting 30 a year would be a pretty good goal for him. I'd love to see him score 40, don't get me wrong. And while I do think Bjorkstrand can provide 30 goals in an 82 game regular season, we still need more scoring. We're still going to need more to come and that's probably going to have to come from Domi. Domi is a player that automatically becomes one of our best offensive players and he provides that scoring that we're going to need in order for us to go on a deep run. Without getting Domi, I don't think that we're a team that can possibly go on a deep run. We've made some moves, and I know we've got younger players that are good, but Domi is going to be a huge piece of that. Now, I'm not going to ask for the sun and the moon from Domi, but I think 60-70 to 70 points a season would be amazing during a normal 82-game goal, 82 game season. And anything under that, I think, would hurt his value in free agency since he's on a two-year deal, while also hurting the team because we need that offense in order to be a legitimate uh, contender or dark horse. I still don't know if we're a contender. You know, Domi has proven, he's proven multiple times that he can score 50 points in a season easily and he should be hitting his prime. I mean, he's about 25-26. I'm really hoping he can answer the defic deficiency of scoring we had last year because at times, I'm not going to lie, I love the fact that we had all these guys coming up from the Cleveland Monsters you know, the Monstars, as some people called it. And it was still pretty rough to watch offensively. So hopefully, Domi and the boys can get this thing going. And we can at least be at worst, like, top 15 in goals for. The second question revolves around Pierre-Luc Dubois. And can Pierre-Luc Dubois be able to reach that ceiling of what he's capable of? Dubois was drafted third overall in the 2016 draft. And luckily managed not to be Jesse Poyarvi, uh, thankfully. But he's not been what I've expected yet. Um, I personally love Dubois as a player. And I actually bought his reverse retro jersey. So hopefully he signs on maybe like a three-year deal. But fun f story, it still hasn't come out yet. So I called the Blue Line online shop. And I said, hey, I pre-ordered my jersey. It still hasn't arrived yet. Is there any reason? So the guy says, well, to be completely honest with you, we had a COVID outbreak in one of the factories. So we haven't been able to make them at all. So you guys will get that hopefully before Christmas. I'll be able to release that video because the Brock Besser jersey unboxing was a huge hit. If you haven't watched that yet, please go watch that because we're closing in on 600 views there. I'd love to get it to 1,000. Now, with Dubois, he's proven he can be a good player and there's no question about that. But there's times that you can see there's potential where he's not hitting a ceiling that he should be able to break through. And I just want to see him crash through that game three of the qualifying round. You can see this against Toronto. He had a hat trick in a big moment, and you could see that he could handle the pressure. He was a third overall pick. He's a top three guy. You know, he can handle this moment. Dubois 
should break through this ceiling this year and show the league and management he's ready to fa- be the face of the franchise and start providing 70 points a season. I'm expecting to see him sign a short team, short-term deal, though, so that way he can prove he's worth more money and, you know, they'll eventually have to pay up whoever gets him. In my opinion, Yarmo should do his best to get Pierre-Luc Dubois signed to a four-year deal so we have some more time to see him play and then go with whatever direction is necessary in order when we get there, I guess. Because as of right now, I just don't think anything under a three-year deal would be good for us because Pierre-Luc Dubois could hit that 70-point mark or, and then just be a hot commodity that we're not able to keep up with everybody else. But I'd love to see him resign for a long-term deal, like seven or eight years. And then the third and final question, is Corpy or Elvis getting traded? It seems like anytime you talk about our goaltending, NHL.com, The Score, ESPN, all these things, all these websites, all these apps, one of them has to go. They've got to leave. And normally I'm not a big fan of tandems, but I'm just not ready to see one of them leave. Everyone seems to like Elvis more, but personally, I like Jonas a little bit more than Elvis. Um, I think it's just that, you know, Corpusalo had to wait behind Bobrovsky and be the second goalie for years. And he had to be, you know, goalie number two, the backup goalie behind Bob. And I just think that he really showed that he was able... Please don't bark. I know the dogs are barking, but please don't. This is probably going to be the last video you see of Dash in here ever, so just uh, keep that in mind. But anyway, Merz Lincoln's... Um, you know, obviously he proved his worth last year, but he did have a hot stretch. I don't know what his stats were without that hot stretch, but they weren't exactly, you know, earth shattering without that hot stretch. It was a key part of it. But I think the key deciding factors will be whether or not if they do or don't get traded will be how they both perform and whether Matisse Kivlinix is ready to stay in the NHL. Last year, Kivlinix went 9-8-4 and with a 2-9-6 goals against average, a 9-0-4 save percentage, and one shutout with the Cleveland Monsters. He could probably use a little bit more time in the AHL, at least, at least another year if they even play. I know that the, you know, the AHL is having some issues. And then with Jonas and Elvis being under contract for two more seasons, I'd love to see them both play for the Blue Jackets. I'm just not sure it's going to happen. But I do think we won't have to worry about the expansion draft. So that is a good thing. You know, Merz Lincolns is... Um, not eligible to be taken in that, and then Corpy will be protected as well. So we're not going to be one of those teams that struggles to say which one are we going to protect. They're both 26, I think. So it'll be really interesting. I do hope we get to see them together. I think the difference is we need both of them in order to be higher in the standings. I'm not sure if Kiv Lennox is ready to go yet. Um, I don't know. Let me think. Do you want Corpy or do you want Elvis to be traded? Which one do you want? And that's all I'm going to say for that. This wraps up the video for today. Everybody have a great Thursday. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. We got an extra 24 subscribers. We're at 44 now when I last checked. And it's been great. We've been growing. I thank you so much. Everybody, again, have a great day and stay safe from COVID. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes and hockey fans in general. This is your captain signing off. Have a great week.